we're going to start with the heart ornament so I have got my piece of fabric here which is five inches in width 11 inches in length and I have my piece of fusible interfacing of the same size cut to the same size as the piece of fabric now remember with the fusible interfacing it has the shiny side and the dull side so you're not you're going to put it down shiny side okay so your shiny side is going to be laying down on the fabric not the other way around we put that on the wrong side of the fabric so the fabric that you want to show when you finished your ornament should be facing down okay this part is going to be on the inside of the ornament and will not show it's a good idea to use a presser cloth so you don't get anything you don't want on your iron when you do this and then we're going to fuse that onto our cloth you can check your instructions if your fusible interfacing came with instructions and remember for this project we only need the light fusible interfacing not the heavy okay it looks like mine's pretty well fused so I'm going to let that cool before we go on to the next step. Interfacing is all cool, so I'm ready for my next step. So you should be able to print out one of these heart templates, uh, which will be in the notes section. If you can't see it, please click on show more and it will bring up the link to my Dropbox and then you can go to the link and download it and print it out. Okay, so what we want to do with the heart is put it fit it on the fabric but on one side don't go putting it in the middle or this is not going to work so we're going to put it close to the edge but not absolutely on the edge and we'll just hold that still I'm tracing mine with uh, just a light pen you can do yours with a fabric marker or a disappearing fabric pen or whatever you have a dark pencil would work and try to trace it pretty accurately because this is going to be your sewing line okay make sure your lines are good enough that you will be able to see them once they're under the sewing machine this could be done by hand as well with um, back stitch you could do it by hand with a needle and thread if you've got that sort of patience and then we're ready for the next step So the next part is to put on some sort of loop that you're going to hang your ornament from. This is a little bit tricky just getting the placement right, but I think you'll be able to manage. Now I'm using some inkle band that I've woven. Um, you can use what you like. Ribbon is lovely. You can use rickrack, you can use string, whatever suits you. Now what we need to do is put this on the right side which is underneath at the moment and we want to try and place it so that it's in the middle of the heart roughly so it's a little bit difficult because you can't see so much but you can leave this little bit sticking up and that will give you a good guide now I can feel that it's in the middle there of my heart and that's where I want it to be once I sew it and turn it out the right way so I'm just going to pin that there and then I'm actually just going to take a couple of stitches and just stitch across there so that it's going to be held on so the part that we actually want to stitch on is about where I've got my pin going in because we don't want any stitching lines to show on our heart afterwards and we don't want to sew our hearts together at that point either so we're just going to unfold that and if you look at the back that's pinned on there back to the front we're just going to do a couple of stitches across here just to secure it then we don't have to worry about having a pin in it I'll just take my pin out A 
couple of straight stitches should do it. Okay, so now that's sewn on there and I don't have to worry about it. Now for that ribbon, we just want to turn this over and I'm going to just tuck this up a little bit and pop a pin in that and you'll see why in a moment. Just put the pin straight down to secure it there so it's not hanging over the edge of the fabric. Now let's have a look at why. The next part is to take our piece of fabric and fold it under so that those two raw edges meet over here and so that the two right, size, right sides of our fabric are facing each other. And then we can put a few pins in there as well. Now you can see the reason that I folded and pinned that tie on the inside, that loop, is if it had been hanging down here, I'm going to be sewing on this line in a minute and I'd sew straight over it and it wouldn't be a loop coming up at the end, it'd just be sewn onto the work so it wouldn't do us any good. Alright, so let's just pin those layers together just so that they don't go moving while we're trying to sew them. Just a few pins will do. And I haven't actually put my turning marks on here, but I'd better do that. So it should be about there. And that means that I'm going to sew from this point right all the way around and to this point, but I'm not going to sew this part because I need an opening. Okay, let's sew those layers together. We're just using a straight stitch. So remember, I'm starting at one of my markers. And I'm going to use a fairly small stitch. Uh, I've set my length to just above two. And the machine always comes unthreaded when I'm videoing, doesn't it? Always. Try that again. When you come to the point of the heart at the bottom, just stop and make sure your needle's right down in the fabric, lift up the presser foot and pivot. Okay, line it up with your next line where you need to go and down. When I'm going around curves, I usually go pretty slowly and carefully and I stop every couple of stitches, make sure that the needle's down in the fabric and readjust, lift the, lift the presser foot up if I need to, readjust and then keep going. Also, if you have a clear presser foot, that can be handy for times like this. I actually do have one, but I hadn't put it on the machine. It would have been better if I did. It just lets you see more what's happening. Coming up to the top of the heart now. And I'm coming up to another point. Stop and pivot there.
reach that marker and that's where I stop. Cut that off, take the pins out and if you're happy with your stitching, if you think that you've done a good enough job with the stitching, you can cut it out. So just cutting close to the edge but not on the stitches. Still attached there. There we go. Leave a bit more space around where you haven't stitched so you can tuck that in afterwards when your hand stitching closed. <laughs> 